Alright, so in this video I'm going to teach you how to desolder electrical components from a PCB board. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple different methods using the solder suction pump and how to use the desoldering wick as well as how a hot air station can help you out. As I go along I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I've learned that sort of help the process. So let's get started. Let's start out taking a look at desoldering wick. So when you choose a wick, you want the wick to be about the same size as the solder being removed and you want to use a soldering iron tip that's about the same size as your soldering wick. Make sure that you use appropriate flux when you're desoldering. Next, you're going to want to use a flat soldering iron tip if possible, and you're going to want to maximize contact with the wick by angling the iron. In other words, you want to have as much of the hot iron touching the wick as possible. Make sure you clean your soldering iron tip before you try to desolder anything and remove the tip and the wick at the same time so that the soldering wick doesn't get stuck on the board. When you've done everything correctly and you get enough heat transfer onto the, the braid, um, I'm going to go ahead and even add a little bit of solder here to get some extra heat transfer on the other side of the solder wick. And what you'll see is that that solder in that through hole is going to get wicked away and we'll be able to remove it using our solder wick. So once we remove our solder wick, both at the same time, you can see that we've cleaned out that through hole. Now, if you're having trouble removing solder from a through hole, it's most likely because you're not able to heat it up hot enough. Now that's probably happening because either one, your soldering iron tip may be too small and the temperature may be too low. So consider changing the size of your tip and the temperature. You could add some flux to remove oxidation and increase heat transfer. This may be counterintuitive, but you could also add solder back into the hole, and this will act as a bridge for heat. So if you're having trouble, if you've removed a little bit of the solder from the through hole, and now you're having trouble getting that last bit, you may actually need to go back in and add additional solder. That'll create a bridge for heat to transfer to that other solder, and then allow it to get wicked away. One thing you can do is actually cut your wick into smaller pieces, and this helps reduce the amount of heat that you have to put into the wick. And the last tip is if you need additional heat transfer between your soldering iron and the wick, you can add solder in between the wick and the iron, and this will create thermal linkage between those two things and allow heat to transfer better.